So uh, this is kind of a relatively scary diagram uh, that's basically discussing uh, in schematic form exactly what we talked about in the previous part of this video. And uh, what I want you to do is not get too intimidated by all the molecules and everything that are floating around here, um, but, uh, but let's start off by orienting ourselves. And basically what we're looking at here is a, a schematic of the mitochondrial matrix. And as you can see here, uh, this is the matrix of the mitochondria, and then this ring-like structure around around uh, the matrix is the inner mitochondrial membrane and then surrounding that out here which is not drawn uh, is the outer mitochondrial matrix and then the intermembrane space between obviously the two membranes. Now um, let's go back and, and discuss uh, briefly what we talked about and that sugars uh, get oxidized in four molecules known as NADH, uh, FAD, uh, H2. Um, uh, which are, are shown here, and what happens is those molecules um, donate their uh, electrons to the electron transport chain, and each one of these boxes is kind of a schematic uh, representation of a protein in the electron transport chain that is composed of various different uh, molecules um, that um, uh, allow electrons to bounce from, from molecule to molecule. So some of those molecules are cytochromes, uh, some of them are iron-containing uh, substances. Um, uh, the, the importance of each of those is, is, can be you know, discussed in greater detail in, in biochemistry books, and they're not super important for our purpose here, so I'm going to leave most of them out. But the whole point is that once NADHs and FADH2s uh, donate their electrons to the chain, what happens is that those electrons bounce from molecule to molecule, as you can see here, bouncing from protein to protein, uh, bounce, 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 get transferred here, and then bounce, uh, bounce, and bounce. And as they do that, what happens is that protons uh, use that energy in the bouncing of those electrons to to get pumped across the inner mitochondrial membrane. And that happens at uh, this protein carrier and this protein carrier, you can see here, and then also here. And that forms the proton gradient that I was talking about. So basically now in the intermembrane space, you have a concentration of protons that is much greater than the concentration of protons uh, inside the matrix. And so now you have a gradient where um, protons are going to want to flow back down into the matrix. And the only way they can do that, uh, coincidentally, is they can't just flow in through this, this membrane. What they have to do is they actually have to come in through the ATP synthase unit here. ATP synthase, and this is also another specialized protein. And what happens is as those proteins flow down their gradient, that energy is used to turn this complex here, this protein here, uh, in which an ADP and a phosphate are converted to the energy-rich ATP molecule. And then ATP is free to diffuse out into the rest of the cell, and like we said, can go on to other biochemical um, processes, such as a formation of DNA, RNA, and, uh, and other proteins, um, so biochemical processes. And that, in a nutshell, is basically what the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation is all about. It's about converting the electrons uh, in fuel, such as sugars and, um, and fats, into electron carrier molecules, which ultimately bounce from carrier to carrier, uh, releasing energy. That energy is converted into a proton gradient, and that proton, the energy in that proton gradient, is converted into ultimately the formation of ATP. So it's basically energy is getting converted to different types of energies, uh, eventually to a form of energy that the cell can use um, in order to uh, uh, go on to use those biomechanical process, biochemical processes, uh, in order for it to survive.